You're listening to Creep Geeks Podcast. So it begins again. Welcome to Creep Geeks Podcast. I'm Greg. I'm Omi. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. This is going to be Season 6, Episode 233. Haunted Freight Depot Investigation, Sad News, More Unpopular Paranormal Opinions, and Vote for Us? Yeah. So we're back after the New Year's break, and we decided it's time to do a podcast. (laughs) You know, got to do it. You know, everybody else was doing podcasts and stuff, trying to take a real quick break, and they're all like, oh, I'm good. And you know what? We absorbed the holiday. Yeah. Actually, I noticed there was some um, holiday fatigue in our Instagram. Yes. A lot of folks were like, yeah, no. We said we was. We wasn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, and here's the thing. You got to take a break sometimes because you just do. You get burnt out a little bit, and, you know, I understand. Because what I think is happening I mean, this is based off my own previous experience over the holidays, especially when you get past this, you know, Christmas and to rocking into the new year and stuff. You're just, you're busy. You're busy. And then as far as like the paranormal and ghost community and UFO communities are concerned, typically this time of year, we've talked, we've done whole episodes, how this is the dry time of year. Yeah. Well, that's different this year. We saw a bunch of interesting headlines. However, you open the article you read the first two paragraphs and you realize it's it's a rehash of something you read six months ago. Yeah, it's like, you know, oh, man, I got to do an article for next year because I want to take my Christmas break. So I'm going to rehash some <laughs> stuff. Uh, and typically the episodes that we have that we've done in the past where they have led right up to the, the holiday break, they don't do as well because people are doing other stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, there you go. Uh, speaking of other stuff, you should vote for us. There's a contest uh, from para- Paranormality. Mm-hmm. And they have a favorite podcast of the month contest. And we might have already missed it. I don't I don't know. But we have a link on our website. Well, we're starting early with the new year, so. Yeah. You know, you can click the link and it takes you to where you can fill out who your, your favorite podcast um, is. Mm-hmm. And you can vote three times. So what I would suggest you do <laughs> is click on the link in our show notes and you can get there by going to creepgeeks.com. Right. Uh, and click this episode because we list all of our notes in the show notes so that you can kind of peruse and check links out if you want. Hello, Pepper. That's our dog who thinks for some reason we're talking about her. Anyway, so you click the link and you go there and, you, and basically you have to fill it out three times. Just copy and paste and then just do your uh, three votes and roll out. And we'd appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what accolades it has behind it, but I've seen other podcasts doing it. I'm like, well, you know what? We could do that. So uh, We're going to go. jump on the bandwagon, Yeah, too. I voted three times for the Creep Geeks podcast <laughs> because I can, and I hope Omi did, too. Did you? You I'm didn't. Not, I'm going to say I'm th- voting three times. No, it, it They allowed you to. It says right there, you can vote up to three times. Okay. Well, I have you. It yet. doesn't say you can vote up to three times for three different podcasts. It just says you can vote. Up to three times. I have yet to vote for January. So much like our previous election, you can vote early and vote often. <laughs> Stop. Hey, it's true. I got three mail-in ballots. Mm-hmm. So from Virginia and New Mexico and North Carolina. So it is what it is. I didn't use them, but that's okay. Okay. Speaking of okay, after you vote for the Paranormality Favorite Podcast uh, contest, then you can basically finish listening to the episode yeah oh and did you know that like thanksgiving dinner like turkey and stuff like that is only supposed to be good for like three days in your refrigerator yeah i did not know this I, there has been times where i've ate thanksgiving dinner right and yeah. christmas dinner for like three weeks two weeks so like my parents so. always make a really big thanksgiving mostly because i have so many step siblings and siblings and family come so on top of the huge family we have a lot of leftovers and The one thing I dislike more than anything, like taking down the Christmas tree and taking the ornaments down, is Thanksgiving when you have to put all those leftovers away. Because they were very, very in tune with how long food lasts. So we would be packing stuff in the freezer and just long, drawn-out process. Yeah. 
So we wouldn't put it, just shove it in the fridge and hope for the best. We would. Well, I would. I don't have time. <laughs> you know. Okay. So what we were asked to do, we're going to kind of roll into what we did for our New Year's. Mm-hmm. All right. So what we were asked to do is that in Marion, North Carolina, they were going to do a historical like ghost walk, you know, it's more historical based, but it, what was it called again? It had, um, do you remember? Historic ghost walk. Okay. So what I just said, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we were going to do this thing. It was like a historic ghost walk. What was it? Oh yeah. So, okay. So they had a historic ghost walk in Marion, North Carolina, uh, which happens to be home of the Marion Bigfoot festival. That's one of the things that, you know, drew, drew us to anyway. So, we were like, okay, what do you want us to do? And they were like, would you like to do a ghost investigation at the freight depot or the train depot in Marion for these people that are going to do this ghost walk thing, this historic slash ghost walk? And we were like, sure. And our original thought was, this will be fun. We'll set it up. You know, we'll probably have some time, you know, kind of bring some people around, show them some stuff, do a little investigation. Kind of. D- there was a lot of people. Yeah. It, it wound up being what? How many? Um, between 90 and 124 people. Yeah. Because we got numbers for the first and the sec- and last crowd, but we didn't really get a number on the middle one, I think. Yeah, and the middle one was pretty big as well. So yeah. a lot more people than we inspect- expected, and we had to kind of improvise a little bit to, Well, that's because you know. um, they tried, and for some reason, even though they tried, the ticket sales wouldn't shut down. Yeah. So it was like... Buy now, and people would see the sign for it, and they just hop on and yeah. order a ticket. <laughs> which was, which was, you know, it was great, right? Yeah, and, and it was kind of funny because we had started putting all the chairs up in this in the train depot because people go there. There's like events that you can do there, and you can get married. One girl talked about her sixth grade school dance was there. Yeah, you know, and we put up most of the chairs, and then we wound up trying to pull them back out again because people seen the chairs and were like, "Oh, this is great. We're just going to have a seat." Yeah. And and they didn't, for the most part, really look interested in getting up and walking around. Mm. So I'm okay with that. So we kind of did our thing, and we did a little introduction. We showed a lot of our uh, uh, ghost gear, and by a lot, not a lot. We, we didn't bring a ton of stuff because, honestly, we expected small groups of maybe 5 to 10 people walking around showing them some stuff, and not 20, 30, 40 people at a time. 47 in one, 43 in another, and I think it was like 30-something. It was like 130. Yeah. It, like... I can't remember the exact number for that one group. So, um, yeah, it was supposed to be. And the funny thing was, like, the one group was supposed to be huge, the last one. And, like, apparently as people were rolling in, some people just started walking off because they were like, "That's we're not all fitting in this building. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and, you know, they wanted to go up and see the nugget drop because this is a town that's known for gold. And so they wanted to. uh, Yeah. You know, sort of make a big golden nugget, and you know they drop this this golden nugget thing down, and they light it up and stuff. And there's a place in Ohio that drops like a, a potato that shoots fireworks. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, I seen it on the TikTok, right? This guy's like in Ohio. I, I thought for sure it was like Idaho. That makes sense, but nope, Ohio dropping a big potato. But anyway, oh, I was wrong. It's New Year's Eve historical ghost walk and depot investigation. That's what it was. Okay, that was that's what we did, right? <laughs> yeah, we should probably change the name, but yeah, um, so. Uh, it was good. We had some people. We answered a lot of questions, and we showed people how to use gear, and we just basically uh, and did a thing, right? And then when we got done, yeah. we did our own little investigation where we just basically did a spirit box. We ran a st- spirit box the entire time, and we had video and things like that going. We, we still have uh, hours of footage to go through, but it was primarily uh, about figuring out – Um what people were interested in and some people were really interested. Some people weren't. We had a lot of conversations. So, uh, overall for our new year's, it was a good time. So we rolled in 2022 by doing a ghost investigation, um, you know, for the town. So like, yeah, we got that. Didn't realize there was going to be that many people. There was a lot of people there. So it was, it was good fun. So we did, uh, record the spirit box sex- session that happened at the end. And we'll play that for you in yeah. just a, in just a little bit. But, uh, yeah, and we'll also give you a little bit of history about the freight depot. And, uh, yeah, kind of do it like that. We'll, we'll talk about it. It was good. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things we do want to do is you know, we went through in our last podcast, because people had asked us in the past, and we took it away, and we decided to bring it back. 
What are we going to be having for dinner at the end of this podcast? Oh. Do you remember? Yeah. What is it? We're going to have spaghetti and Italian sausage. Yes. With meat sauce. With meat sauce. Sauce. So you got to, you know, meats. (laughs) So it should be delicious. I always look forward to it because we typically do the podcast on the weekend and, you know, we, uh, we'll do it and we'll have a nice dinner afterwards uh, and watch TV and stuff. Oh, and if ever anybody cares or is concerned, Pepper is having um, baked unseasoned chicken. So, yeah. (laughs) So Pepper is having baked bland chicken, (laughs) right? Yes. So anyway, Pepper is our puppy. So she went, yeah. Okay. So um, with the Freight Depot, as far as I know, not a lot of people have done the investigation for the Freight Depot or have been invited to go in there and do a, a, a ghost investigation. In no. the Depot. I would love to have been able to spend three or four hours just unencumbered because I will be honest, uh, full disclosure, it didn't feel like anything was going on at all until it started getting a little late. Yeah. Which? And you know, because I'm like, this place, oh, this is going to be one of these things where there's nothing happening here. I didn't feel anything. I didn't, you know, and then later on it started to kind of get, uh, you know, it started to get late in the evening and then the attitude of the place shifted a little bit. So I... I talked to an employee that or of a business that works in that building and they made a note that it seems to happen at certain hours and certain times, much like a train depot. Yeah. It's, yeah. Activity comes and goes. Now the activity that they spoke of, uh, was a little different than what we experienced, but still they, they would, they often work in this building by themselves with no other employees and they'll be sitting there and they'll hear voices, or they'll hear something. And since the building is split into an event venue section and then an office section, and part of the part of this person's job is to see if people want to rent the event venue area, they'll run in there, and then there's nobody there. Yeah, you know, there's nobody to greet or nobody to say, "Hey, what are you doing in here?" Yeah, one thing I did notice is at the top of the the building where the roof and the trusses are and all that sort of thing is it looks like it's open. So it may be from the freight side to the office side is open all the way through. Yeah, where I can kind of see noise maybe traveling through there. But you know, hey, it, it started to get weird, and at the end we did a little EVP. I'm sorry, spirit box box session. Um asked it some questions so if there's anything there that sort of thing and we got weird responses that were hard to make out there were a couple that um you know sounded like an answer to the question that yeah. we were asked um or that we were asking but yeah it was just kind of a thing so we went and we did this we set up um some gear and one of the things that we set up was these little led motion activated cat balls because there's a chair from a juror yeah, from the courthouse, which is just like a block away. Yeah. And it's one of the original juror chairs from 1923. Yeah, nice little leather chair. Yeah. Actually, I thought it was, well, and, that and, looks pretty comfortable. But one thing I wanted, if we just back up, along with that old chair, there's um, there's a little hallway that separates the office section from the event venue. And in that hallway are all sorts of old objects from the original um, tra- train depot, as well as one of the buildings that's right next to it. So there's all this old stuff, you know? Yeah. And we all know old stuff picks up energy, allegedly. And, I mean, some of it's kind of weird. Yeah. So, I don't know. And and we asked the Historical Society to provide us with some details about possible hauntings or any evidence of something happening there. They did give us one one link about a a death that happened right next to the train depot. Yeah, one bit of a... Deca- interest yeah a decapitation um somebody named like harry lentz now blocks away there have been other uh train fatalities or railroad related fatalities but those were several blocks away um and a little more recent too so yeah. are those tied into or do those bad situations go to the train depot once stuff happens I mean, who knows? It, yeah. it could be one of those things where that little little area, um, in general, that little two block sort of section, uh, you know, may have some stuff going on. Because there's a, uh, there's supposed to be a couple other places, little buildings and stuff that have activity happening. But uh, yeah. we did the home. 
or we did the uh, Home Depot. We did the, the train freight depot. Did some investigation, and it was it was okay. I mean, for never having been there and just seeing it sort of change when it got dark and got later in the evening, and then you know about twelve thirty or so. Um, you know, and anyway, it was good. It was a fun time for us, and I'm. I should have checked like the. Because they have, like, little rosters and all that old stuff. Like, yeah. what time did the trains usually pass through? That would have been neat if it matched, like, the time that your, yeah. your stuff happened. That would have been good. <laughs> I know. That would have been See, thorough. that's the problem when you do these <laughs> investigations. If you've never been there before and, you know, nobody really has been there, you don't really have a lot to go off of. Like, who do you talk to? Uh, you know, you always come up with things that you could have, would have, should have done. Yeah. So, I don't know. It was kind of neat. So, uh, um, I think we're going to. What? Am I being attacked? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what was it? It's for some reason we have a ladybug that was in the workshop and now it's in the house. Those ladybugs, man. It's all hey, if you ever if you ever want to get in ladybugs, those things if if they can get out of control. Yeah. So it's, I'm just saying. Okay. What so you should leave us about? a note or a message or something if you've been swarmed by ladybugs. I don't know. I forgot you were being all frantic, point, like I was getting attacked from behind, you know, and I can't really see. So, uh, so anyway, it was a pretty good time. And I think what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go ahead and play about five minutes of the Spirit Box session. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I had a hard time making out, you know, what was trying to be said because our Spirit Box, we have it looped back so that it's not that, you know, too terribly grating on the ears, with the all that kind of stuff. Uh, so. If you think you understand or can make out what is being said, um, and the reason why we're actually including it is because it seems like that when a question was asked, it would try to respond. If it, if it could be purely coincidental, I don't know. Uh, but if you think that you can understand, um, you know what was being said, drop us a line. Let us know. Yeah. Because we do have a phone number that you can call if you'd like mm-hmm. to, you know, leave us some information. Maybe you have a story about something that you'd like to share. Yeah, that phone number is going to be 575-208-4025. Yeah. So let's go ahead and take a second. We're going to play that. You ready? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Okay, so we're at the Freight Depot. It is January 1st, 2022. 2022, right? Yeah. And so we've done a ghost investigation, basically tours the three lives tonight. And so now we're using the spirit box. It's been running and it's going off every once in a while. Just in case, if you're here and you want to say hello, you can certainly do that. We have this set up right here, this little spirit box. It's got the little numbers counting down. If you'd like to say something, you can. We're just kind of here to see what's going on. I've got a little recorder right here. So if you say something or if you want to say something... Go ahead, say it again. If you want to say something, you can say it in this recorder. And maybe we can hear what you have to say. Well, yeah, we're just seeing what's going on. See if there's uh, somebody who'd like to say hello to us. Is there anyone here? My name is Greg. And that's Ernie. You want to say that again? Yeah. So, what's your name? Are you from the area? There's a lot of old buildings around. We also have this little meter right here. See it? It's got a little green light on it. You say I see. You can change the color. See, let me tap it. There's yellow. 
and there's red. And it can make a noise when it beeps. Let me make it beep for you. So if you'd like to make this beep, let us know you're around, that'd be great. If you'd like to speak into this microphone so we can hear you, that would be great too. We have our little dog, Pepper. He's walking around. Do you like dogs? No? So we're in the event side of the building, which is the old freight depot. Do you like to be on the other side? No? Well, if you want to say something, you certainly can. We're listening. Is there anyone here at all? Yeah, so it was kind of weird. We didn't really get what seemed to be like any real definitive things. It seemed like if there was anything there, it was trying to respond. There was a couple of things that, you know, yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, I see, you know, that kind of, <laughs> and, so, and when, you know, I don't, it's kind of, it's kind of one of those things where the more you listen to things like this, the more you can kind of make it think you can you can sort of influence what you think that you actually hear. Yeah. But there were a couple um it seems like responses to questions that we had and they didn't really make much sense, but you know, I would think that you know, maybe there's a little bit of a learning curve, I guess. I don't know. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh like it seemed to interact with Pepper, it seemed to try to say your name. Yeah. Um I said, "Do you see this?" and it's like, "I see it." You know, I I don't know. You know, maybe I'm reading into it. What do you guys think? I mean, that's pretty much kind of what we're looking at there. And if you don't want to give us a call at 575-208-4025, you can always reach out to us, contact at creepgeeks.com. Yeah. And that was the other thing we did at this investigation that um, I just wanted to throw out there. At the end of each of the walks, we gave everybody one of our business cards and said, hey, if you have something strange happen to us, happen to you during this investigation or you just want to talk to somebody, reach out to us. And we had one or two people reach out to us. Yeah. But that's kind of like, I guess, not just good etiquette, but our hope that we can get some more creepy or weird leads in this area. You yeah. Know? Yep. That's that is correct. Yeah. That's correct, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of. I don't want to say too much because this is. It kind of is what it is. I'd like to go back. Yeah. Under different circumstances, if that's a possibility, um, you know. I found out one of the old buildings that was across from the place. Not the place that's like the the tall building, but one of the smaller buildings is actually a beauty shop that's been investigated. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Don't want to say too much. Yeah. We might have an opportunity to go in there. Fingers crossed. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, who knows? So, anyway, that's kind of what we did, you know, for our little uh, New Year's Eve celebration. So, if you guys did something cooler, you should let us know. Yeah. So that'd be kind of neat because, you know, the way we're doing things is uh, hopefully getting 2022 
the start it needs. So maybe we can sort of maybe do a little course correction because the past couple of years have been garbage. Like this particular year, we lost some people. Yeah. Right? Like Betty White, comedian extraordinaire. You know, it's like, wow, that, that was kind of. New Year's Eve. Yeah. She was and just then, like, nope. <laughs> she was, and somebody had said that that's the perfect sort of comedic timing, right? Yeah. You know, all this stuff is supposed to happen for a hundredth birthday. And then she kind of left right before it, you know, it's like, oh, you know, got us, right? You know, yeah. got him. Uh, and then sadly, we just found out that Bob Saget from Full House has passed away. Not exactly sure what the deal is with that. Found in a hotel room in uh, and he had been, Florida. Yeah, in Florida. And he had been doing comedy all weekend at a location. So he was doing like a couple of shows down there. Yeah, he said he did. did it was marked as him saying that he did a two hour set. Yeah. Yeah, didn't yeah? I don't know. But sixty five. Yeah, <laughs> when you, when you're young, you're like, oh, that's ancient. But when you get towards sixty five, you're like, ooh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty weird, man. Pretty sketchy. So I don't know. So we have a couple different links in our show notes. So if you want to check out the the event link for the event that we did, and also the facilities of the historic uh marion and all that stuff you can certainly do that too and we you know we should kind of check it out so we're going to give you a little update on our uh, trail cam <laughs> adventure so you know having had some things make weird noises and stuff in the past and notice some animal activity and you know skunks and weird stuff like that well, uh we we had you know set up a game camera in the past and to be honest with you it was uh not fulfilling yeah all these game cameras you know, you look at the reviews and you, and people are like the video is amazing, and you're like, this video is complete trash. And, then, and I think the expectation that people have is so low with a trail camera that they don't really either a know what. I guess I can say based off the reviews that we've read, when you see people that say, "Check out this amazing video of blurry blob squatch <laughs> hiding in the trees," they're saying it's amazing. <laughs> That's where all this comes from. The expectation. Yeah. The bar is so low. I mean, people are so easily swayed by things these days that to, you know, accept that caliber of video is sad because we take pictures and stuff like that. You know, we just, I, I expected more. I went out today and took pictures of individual raindrops. So that's my bar right there. So I know my bar's too high. But yeah. even still, some of the stuff that we we were able to catch. Um, with one of our the older trail cam that we we had in our possession, I was just like, "This is this is," I was disappointed. Yeah, but it's because my expectation was too high. Right. So we reset expectations, got a different trail camera, set that up, and it's marginally better, which is still <laughs> a marked improvement over the current trail camera. Yeah. And we have another one coming to see if that one's any better. No. And honestly, if it's not, I'm not going to keep. Pumping money into these stupid trail cams. I mean. Well, okay. So a lot of this started because Pepper has to go to the bathroom at night. You know, she's, she takes after us. We're night owls. So we used to work nights for certain companies and we would get home at midnight or even, you know, 1230. And so she's up. So 2 a.m. to go potty is totally normal. I take her outside and yes, I hear coyotes, and sometimes I hear other stuff, like I'll hear deer running through. But lately I've been hearing something else, not just coyotes. And if you listen to a lot of Bigfoot researchers or even watch some of the Bigfoot shows, they'll talk about how Bigfoot travels with coyotes. Yeah. And certain uh, cryptid researchers will say the same thing, like certain cryptids. <laughs> And other paranormal cryptos. Yeah, and they travel phenomenon. along waterways. They travel along railroad tracks. They travel where those big power line trees are that you see they're cut across the top of mountains, you know, which we, we and, have and then close, there's, relatively yeah. close. And then there's folklore particular to this area talking about indigenous little folk. Yeah. So if I'm hearing these things that are not coyotes. Little peoples. And they're not, you know, a fox or whatever. Let's get some cameras out there to see what is at, actually out there. Yeah, so the update of what we've seen so far is... A fox. Yes. Deer. Probably the same fox. We've seen... It could be two different fox foxes, fox eye, whatever. But yeah, we've seen fox and a deer. Several deer. 
Yeah, a bunch yes. of deers. One of them's big too, and it's yeah. a lady deer, so a doe. Yeah. Yep. And um, we're, we're not deer experts, so don't yes. come at us. You know. <laughs> possum. Yes. Rabbits. Yep. You put this in here. <laughs> We've seen a possible ghost orb that <laughs> left the ground and flew straight into camera, or it, it floated. It could be a bug. Mm-hmm. I don't really know. We've seen what possibly may be uh, an owl. Yeah, we actually posted something on our Instagram tonight, and it's funny because the first image, there's only two images, and one is that, and the other is just literally a blur. Yeah. So we posted the best one. You see these beady little eyes. And it looks like that little anime grumpy frog. Yeah, but could, could be an owl. Yeah, um, one of our, our Instagram followers and, and um, Patreon supporters, he's like, it might be an owl. A little that's possible. screech hooty owl thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And the one I didn't put in here, which has been good so far, is old Bobcat. Yeah. So We've just, only got a little bit of him. Yeah. It, so the thing is, is that, you know, everybody has these cameras. We bought them a couple of years ago. We bought the one and we set it up and we weren't very happy with it. We sort of put it away. And we're like, you know, let's just give it another shot. Read the directions just in case maybe, you know, our expectations were, were – uh, too high. incorrectly uh, assigned with the video quality we have based off of uh put some better F- not using uh, directions or not you know to to set the camera correctly but no we did i mean we know this kind of thing so we uh i put some better effort into putting it someplace yeah because uh i don't know how other people do it but putting some of these like deep into the woods and stuff you have other branches and trees in the way i found a tree right outside the tree line to put mine um, hopefully no branches swing and give it like false captures or whatever. Yeah. Cause that's the other thing I've seen some stuff recently and I'm like, that is a tree branch hit by wind blowing very fast. Yeah. You know? So I tried to avoid some of that stuff and we're still <clears throat> getting some critters at least. So, yeah. Yeah. So maybe we'll get some more. We have another camera coming in. Once we get this all figured out, uh, the goal has, has always been if we go out into the woods to do this stuff, to set up a camera to see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> excuse me on our van we have cameras set up to see what's going on to record so anyway we can do that kind of thing to to possibly you know, <laughs> give us more to look at you know, the better yeah never know what you might catch right we still so have some kind of footage thing. from the van that we need to go over yes from like thomas divine and brown mountain uh thomas divine i've already gone over made a video put it up on our youtube channel we need to share it to some of our other folks too. Well, yeah, it's on, it's on, <laughs> it's on the internet. We we put it out there. Yes. Uh, so yeah, because the goal is to try to capture as much stuff as possible, and you can't be everywhere at the same time. So multiple cameras, that kind of thing, is uh, is kind of what we're trying to do. So anyway, and you know, it's just boring, boring stuff to talk about gear and stuff. That's the stuff I like. Is the gear stuff that people yeah. people don't care? Well, they just want to see stuff, homie. They don't care about all the work that goes into setting things. And we up. made sure we talked about that during this ghost tour. We had like these crowds of forty people sitting around, and I would explain to them, "Do you see that camera?" I'd explain we had a three camera setup that would be going for four hours. So three times four is twelve. Yeah. And these people, their eyes just started to glaze over. They're, They're like, like, "We don't give a crap how much you have to work. Show us the good stuff." But then they talked to us, and I'm like, "Yeah, I have to go through twelve hours of footage just to find that one three second moment that yeah. you see instantaneously on a TV show." Which you know, hey, that's just part of uh, it is what it is kind of a thing. But you, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, and, and and that's kind of probably part of the problem, right? And that's what's going to lead into our unpopular paranormal opinions part two. Ah. Uh. Yes. Because we uh, did, before the holiday, we did, you know, unpopular paranormal opinions. And we broke them up because there was a lot. And so here's the second part of it. And these are random and unproven and just opinions. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like we have to almost like do a disclaimer there. And here's the first one. We all suffer from pareidolia. And, it's, and here's the way I look at it. Yeah. You know, it's part of our survival instincts. And since we as humans don't use it as much, our instincts, or how they were t- intended, the pareidolia side of things is something that we look at now. Right? Yeah. And we're using it differently. 
And you know what pareidolia is, is when you see faces or humanistic characteristics in, in, in inanimate things or in animals. Yeah. There's you know, like you look at a bush and you're like, oh, there's a Bigfoot in there, right? Yeah. There's oh, a, uh, there's a face staring at me from a rock, that kind of thing. Or auditory pareidolia as right. well. Yeah. Now, if you look at animals, and we're going to tie this into the, the trail cam, right? We see these deer happily munching away. They glance over to one direction and then take off. Yeah. And they're so quick about it. It's like, you know, did this deer actually see something that scared him? Or did the deer think it saw something and said, hey, let me go ahead and use my survival instinct, which is to run away. Yeah. And just take off. And then get to a safe distance and sort of say, okay, uh, that wasn't nothing. That was a leaf or whatever it was that may scare a deer and then run back and finish doing its thing. Yeah. Well, those instincts that that deer still has and relies on for survival and survivability purposes, I think we don't have as much as the human race anymore. It's a little bit different because we, we're not out there, right? Fighting tooth and nail and all that stuff against wildlife and animals. Mm-hmm. So our instinct and a big part of it, since it's not being utilized the same way for survival, it's still there. And I think pareidolia is that side of things where you say, I think I've seen something. I don't know what it is. I got to go. True. And ours has, as humans, it has evolved. You know, I mentioned auditory pareidolia. There's now another term, and it's like apophania, which is discovery or false discovery of patterns and interpreting fake patterns in meaningless data yes so if your job is to listen to audio all day eventually you might find false patterns in audio yes or if i'm sitting there looking at the same trail cam footage mounted in the exact same place over and over again i might see some patterns in the shadows on the outer edges yes and there's lots of examples of that. There's even been movies made by that. There was yeah. a movie that Russell Crowe was in, and he kept seeing numbers and patterns and stuff like that. He used to <laughs> just be like a code breaker. What was that? I don't, I don't remember. At the end, spoiler, he was crazy. <laughs> you know, but yeah, people do that. And so we look for patterns in general, and that's part of like the whole, um, you know, we live in the matrix or simulation type thing. It's like we see these weird random patterns. They don't make sense. Things seem off. Like, so what is, is that? But is pareidolia where you see the thing, the the thing, whether or not it exists or not, is pareidolia the, the solution to the fight or flight, which is, oh, my God, I hear or see something, run. And for humans, it's, well, I've found a pattern, whether it's real or not. I'm going to identify it. I don't think so. I think they're okay. going to be two separate things. I think that pareidolia is put in place for us to be able to take off. And, and we're run. not using it. Instead, we're, and we're not using to... it. We're standing there going, ooh, let me try to take a picture of that. Do you yeah. all see that? <laughs> when we should be going, oh, that's crazy. That's, you know, or hey, that's off. I mean, because think about yeah. it. If, you, if you're out in the woods, right, and you look along a tree line and you think you see a lion's face. Yeah. Right? You should take off because it may be a lion stalking you. Now, what's the what's the predator that I think most people are really afraid of when they go out in the woods? These woods? In general. Mountain lion? Okay. Bear? No. Other people. If I go out in the woods around here, I expect to see a deer or a bear or something like that. I yeah. mean, I know a deer is not a predator, but, yeah. you know. And so if we're somewhere where there is no one and we haven't seen any human people or anything like that for a, a period of time, let's just say a couple of days, whatever. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden you see people. Hmm. The scariest thing in the woods is another person when you're not expecting to see another person. Yeah. Yeah. And so pareidolia is like, you know, you think you see or you can, you know, you apply some of these human traits or whatever. And we're not talking about like the, uh, what is it, the Hidden Valley or the Uncanny, Uncanny Valley. Valley. We're not talking about that where you're you're looking at something that is trying its best to appear to be human, but it's off for whatever reason, which you know, oh, I think that stop, Uncanny Valley stop. thing is that sort of like, it's a different level of pareidolia, but it's also just a different level of like, you know, this isn't, this unnatural. Yeah. You have the natural stuff that you're afraid of, and you have the unnatural, see, which becomes the supernatural. Yeah, and see, that's the problem. Like, pareidolia is having a piece of evidence or an environment or a situation in front of you and seeing something. Uncanny Valley is, there is something in front of you, yeah. There's no discounting that. It's what you see it as it's and what it off. is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny that like other animals are able to like dogs. Dogs have uncanny valley. 
and so do yeah. wolves. So that's really interesting right there. Yeah. So. So there you go. That was our unparanormal <laughs> opinion for that. And we have another one. It's all real and it's all not real. Mm-hmm. So depending on how you look at the paranormal, supernatural, whatever, it's either all real or it's not. Defined by user experience. Basically. Yeah. That one just makes me Because, mad. I mean, let's think about it like this. Say there is Bigfoot. Yeah. And say there is aliens. Okay. So if, the, if there is Bigfoot and there is aliens, that means it's all real. Because then you get into a different sort of like, let's calculate the odds kind of a thing. But what about, okay, so the younger generations, like younger millennials and Gen Z, they're already accepting of the existence of aliens and the possible existence of certain cryptids. So, yes, they are accepting that it is, those things are real. But that, does that mean what evidence is presented in front of us is real? Depends how you look at it. Is, cause, like, I just People watched, have thresholds, right? And, yeah. And that's going to lead into another unpopular And that's opinion. my problem. Yes, I'll say something. I'll say the grand concept of something is real. Aliens are real. UFOs are real. That's, that's my belief or how, my thoughts. However, that doesn't mean if you hand me this horrible Instagram video I just saw I'm going to accept that as real. Aliens to me are real, but not. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you have yeah. to, and that's part of like discerning, you know, what's real, what's not. I mean, you can believe something exists, but at the same time, though, if the evidence presented to you doesn't meet your criteria, then it doesn't meet your criteria. I know. Now, and there's levels of that. And I think that's part of being skeptical, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so here's another unpopular opinion. If we're all in a simulation, things that you know, but you can never remember, right? Like, you know, you should know this, but you can't remember. Mm-hmm. There's that ladybug You're trying to kill me. <laughs> Get off my computer. Right. So if we are in a simulation, things that you know, but you can never remember is the simulation's way of removing the knowledge variable to keep you unaware of the simulation. So, if everyone knows about the simulation, let's just say it became apparent to everyone that on the planet that yes, we are living in a simulation and they believe in that simulation. Like the intent is that I believe this, like let's say the entire planet has woken up and figures out that we're all in a simulation. The simulation will reset. So if enough people believe in the simulation because they know it to be true, Mm Mm-hmm then the simulation is aware of that and will reset. Like immediately? Like, like, I don't know. Okay. I don't know if we're in a simulation or not. So we were watching the, the new year's doctor who, and there was the, the cans of beef beans. And I immediately hopped onto Google trying to find the beef beans because you could have sworn you'd seen them before. I could have sworn I've at least heard about them before from somebody who lived in the UK. Yeah. And I could not find them at all, but I could find plenty of Mandela effect um, posts on Reddit about them. <laughs> yeah. I thought I had seen them in the store when I was in, yeah. actually in London. So, And I had a friend tell me who lived in grocery the UK store. that they used to have to pick up extra cans for somebody. Not really know? a grocery store. Well, I guess it, yeah. it's like a small little corner. Markets. Yeah. Kind of like bodega, but I don't know. Yeah, I thought I'd seen him. I was like, oh, that's kind of So weird. the moment I opened Google is when the simulation reset or what? No, okay. no. It's okay. still on a much larger scale. Okay. Like say it becomes apparent to say 300,000 people that we're living in a simulation. Mm-hmm. And then they start believing that, yes, we're in the simulation, and they start making changes because of the simulation. The simulation will become aware of that and reset. Okay. Is it because it has? it would have to make so many changes? It's because basically that, hey, man, the gig is up. If everybody becomes aware that we're in a simulation and they start believing in it, so many chances, choices, questions, whatever, so many actions would happen that the simulation couldn't keep track of all of that and couldn't keep accountability towards what's happening and it would crash the simulation. So rather than have a cascade effect where it basically completely upsets and, and blows the simulation away, it resets preemptively. You mean like 2012? Maybe. I mean, who knows? Don't be silly. 2012, no, I'm being serious. Well, I mean, the 2012 thing was always one of those things where people were so freaked out about it. It's like, it's just when the calendar ends. Mm-hmm. 
If I fired up my Windows 95 computer and it says, you know, my clock, my date and time stop at 2024, does that mean it's the end of the world? But didn't the Hadron Collider do something in 2012? That's what they say, but did it? I don't remember. Exactly. Who knows? Because you've got China <laughs> oh, no. firing off. China's firing off making stuff that's like 10 times hotter than the sun, and they had it going for 17 minutes. It's like, what's going- we're just trying to blow ourselves yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> that's really what it boils down to. But I think, you know, hey, if we are in a simulation and enough people find out about it and know about it and believe it, the simulation is smart. It's the simulation, and they'll turn around and reset everything or reset what it needs to to keep the simulation going. Yeah. So who knows? Okay, so here's another unpopular opinion. Starlink is actually a defense system. All those satellites all to come together, they create a grid, right, of protection. Mm -hmm. Whether they're maybe just like full of explosives, but some of them are going to have lasers to be able to sort of laser, laser lock to each other and transfer information back and forth. Yeah. It's a self-defense system. Well, there was a recent article by Futurism talking about how space link Starlink, SpaceX's Starlink satellites cause over 1,600 1, near crashes every week. Yeah, but you can't really blame it on Starlink. Okay. There's like 180,000 tons or some crazy number of just space junk up there. Yeah. And, that was you know? all- and then, hey, let's be Russia and just blow one up. You know, let's use a kinetic weapon and just, just smash that satellite to pieces and just blow it up. So now you've got this debris field everywhere. And they were, they were saying, oh, yeah, it's a test. We, we're just testing it. I don't think they were testing their defense capabilities at all. I think this thing was going crazy and they had to blow it up. Hmm. But isn't- See, we had rules for satellites and stuff that we put in space. You know, like, hey, you probably can't use this particular type of battery because it can be really bad if it comes in through the atmosphere. Russians, yeah, the Russians are... Okay, here's my analogy for the Russians. If you like Star Trek. If you don't like Star Trek, I don't care. It's just a good analogy, right? And because Roddenberry partially based his idea of the Klingons off of Russia, the Socialist Soviets Republic, right? You know, the whole CCP, the whole Cold War aspect of things that were really starting to heat up in the 60s and stuff. So the, the conflict that was there between the Klingons and the Federation is sort of based around that. So if the Russians are like Klingons and a lot of stuff they do is kind of crude, because if you look at like Klingon ships, they were crude and all that stuff that kind of goes to play in real life. I spent a little time in Russia. I went on some of their ships. Our ships looked better. Mm-hmm. You know, things were not as like, you know, I don't know. It's the difference between like driving a truck and driving a, a luxury vehicle. Right. So, Anyway, that's just something to look at there. I think it's a defense system, which which explains why we can't get it. Yeah, but that's also, yes, that was in the designs or rumors that existed during the Cold War and even before the Cold War. It's also a common sci-fi. Hey man, Thor's a, hammer, rods from God, all this yeah, stuff. I was about to say, it's a common sci-fi trope. Like, well, it's a, yeah. Like the defense network, or the defense grid in the sky has failed, and the aliens. Well, I mean, are Reagan down. put it out there. It's called Star Wars. Yeah. Basically, he scared the Russians because he's like, "Go ahead, do anything you want. We got Star Wars, man. We can get you from space." But the thing about that is, and a lot of people say he was just basically talk. It was bluff talk coming from Reagan. I don't think so. Mm. But I mean, he did stuff like that. You know, he did bluff. He did say things that scared the crap. You see, because it, it really scared them because he was a cowboy, and they were afraid of that. He had that sort of, you know, cowboy attitude. Yeah. They you know, went and seen Gorbachev. It, they're in Russia. It's very, very cold. Gorbachev's got his coat on and everything to keep warm. Reagan's out there in a business suit. Yeah. Saying, look how tough we are. You know, you think we're a pansy, whatever. But so it was you know, part of detente, I guess, right? So, and the last unpopular opinion is one that I think is needs to really sort of come into play for 2022. I think you do too. What? It's time to be more, we need to have more polite skepticism. <laughs> you know, we do because I've seen things that get posted that are blatantly and obviously not real. Yeah. And somebody will say, that's not real. And then, you know, a bunch of people jump on them. So that actually goes back to our conversation about pareidolia and auditory pareidolia. Um, I saw some stuff happen this week where 
one account posted some stuff and asked for feedback. And then another account was like mentioning auditory pareidolia. Yeah. And People are probably mad because we keep saying pareidolia is pareidolia. Yeah. Now, everybody was trying to be civil, but then one thing happened that somebody read the wrong way. And now one is blocked from the other. And I don't want to go into it because I'm fans of both, you know, but just somebody politely explaining a technical term that actually exists in the paranormal community should not be sufficient cause to block someone or report them Yeah, on social media. Well, I mean, you know, and here's the thing with all this paranormal stuff, nobody is an expert. Everybody says I'm an expert. How? <laughs> We got called. You know, we got- wh- where is the accreditation? Where is all this? It doesn't exist, man. Yeah. Okay, so you researched it for 30 mm-hmm. years. I would put you higher up the scale to become an expert than people who re- researched it for 10 minutes. Yeah. And most experts don't actually say they're an expert. Yeah. At least the way I look at it. Most experts are experts because they're recognized by their peers as being experts. But you still got to have something to back it up. We're already looking at, at the idea of like this whole thing, paranormal, right? Supernatural, all stuff. There's no accreditation. So there's like no real base level. These are the minimum requirements you need to build on it to become an official expert. And some of these people will talk loudest and longest about being an expert while pumping themselves up to give themselves credibility So what you wind up having is, is like the worst case of imposter syndrome you could have because it's actually true. Yeah. And I'm trying so hard right now because it's like, I've looked at over 20,000 photos of paranormal evidence. Okay. So you got to have some actual paranormal evidence to know what's paranormal evidence. So if you're looking at photography... And you've found 20,000 instances of paranormal activity or whatever. Did you learn about photography? Did you learn about the how, the finer points of taking pictures? Did you learn about what a good picture is versus a bad picture? How did you establish what paranormal stuff actually is? Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. But. I don't claim to be an expert. But the problem is just saying those things and saying an expert or going out on a limb and stating an opinion. People are so people are stating their opinions, but automatically going on the defensive because they're expecting they're expecting blowback. Yeah, they're expecting, you know, somebody to call a credibility into question. So let's so just go ahead and attack them. That's where the plight comes in. Yeah. We now, need- I don't have any idea what you're talking about or who you're talking about. So it. You know why? Why? I don't care. <laughs> there, Let's all just do our thing. There needs to be a way that the overall attitude when you present evidence or you present a theory or a thought or an opinion, there needs to be an overall mindset in the community to receive criticism, to actually receive it the same way you'd receive a performance review or feedback about a project you completed. Or if I turned in some advertising for my client, I know they're going to push back and say they want some some more details or whatever, you know? Why, why in the paranormal community do we automatically jump to the affront, you know? Because how dare you, Omi? <laughs> how dare you? That's I, really what it boils down to. I mean, okay, so even an experienced plumber or contractor or photographer, when they present their their finished product or their finished work, they expect somebody to go over it. Yeah, but I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure there is a ton of people that have been screwed over by licensed professional plumbers who have no idea what they're doing. I know. And same thing with every other. And see, that's part of the problem. How do you determine somebody who is actually – qualified, capable, right, and can do a good job versus somebody who can't. The person who does a good job is open to feedback from their peers. That's not necessarily true. 
It should be. That's, but that's not how it is. I mean, I'm just playing devil, devil's advocate. You can have a spiffy, you you can have a spiffy polished presentation as far as I don't mean like an actual presentation, but you know how you present yourself, like on the internet or you know with video, whatever. You can have all that sort of like this great looking stuff, and still have no idea what you're doing, what you're talking about. Yeah. So that's what makes it so hard, right? I mean, it, it, because there are people out there who don't have that presence. That spiffy, polished presence that when you talk to them, you're like, I think they kind of know what they're talking about. Yeah. And it's hard to determine, like, who's really an expert, who's not. You know, who's who's a flash in the pan with all this stuff and who isn't. Yeah. It's like, who do you actually trust? And, like, I, I've, I've said this before. Do I want to go out in the woods with somebody who looks like they bought all their stuff from Cabela's? <laughs> You know, they got everything all ready to go. You know, I mean, they got like you know, they 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 have the the appearance mm-hmm. of being a wild wildlife survival expert, right? Yeah. And then standing right next to him was a dude wearing t shirts, pair of hiking boots, and got a stick. Yeah. Who grew up in the area is like that's all I need to go out in the woods. I don't need all this other stuff. So, who do you trust? There's a group of people that will trust the person that looks the part, and discount the person who is the part. Yeah. And that's the hard part is trying to figure out who's doing what, you know. And at the end of the day, we still have a bunch of blurry pictures to look at, (laughs) a bunch of weird accounts that, you know, you you try to take them at face value from what you hear. And and I think, and that's part of the problem, we need to be politely skeptical. Yeah. And say, wow, that's an interesting piece of evidence you presented. You know, I, however, I don't see it that way. Or the best way to do it probably is just to not, not say anything. Because you'll have people that be like, how dare you? That is completely a Bigfoot. It's like that is a furry blob in the trees. It could be a bear. It could be, who knows? I, I don't know what it is. It could be two googly eyes, Omi yeah. stuck on a tree. <laughs> and see, and all of that is the reasons why we're not ready for any kind of like alien disclosure. <laughs> you know? We're not ready for alien disclosure because we're too busy being vicious to each other on Twitter. That's what. It- <laughs> yeah, or Reddit or, or you yeah. know, anywhere else like Facebooks and stuff. And, you know, just because you give something a different caption or a title or whatever doesn't mean that it's new. It's like I've seen that for 10 years, and it was, a, it was a fraud 10 years ago, and it's still 10 years now, even though you've given it a different name. Well, that was like, because, like, me and Wild and Weird, we were hunting down that one photo because I was like, somebody tried to do this in the dismal, like, somebody tried to claim it was the dismal swamp. Now yeah. somebody's trying to claim it's, like, West Virginia. A couple of years ago, I tracked it down. That was Florida Skunk Ape. Yeah. It's this it little, like a little Georgia miniature thing. looking thing where yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. So just because it says new doesn't mean I'm going to believe you. Yeah. So regurgitating content. But, you know, we should just be politely skeptical because yeah. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Because once you've gone through and you've exhausted most of the possibilities of what it could be or what it isn't, then you can get an idea towards turning your ideas of what it possibly could be or what it is. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, there's no winning. Be prepared to accept criticism and also be prepared to give as much information you're capable of giving when presenting an opinion or evidence. Well, I think a lot whatever. of people get angry, right? Yeah. And they immediately go on the defensive when they get criticism from people who obviously aren't that versed in whatever it is they're speaking about. Okay. You know, like photography. When I, when I would hear stuff like... My cell phone takes pictures just as good as your seven thousand dollar DSLR. <laughs> and you know, okay, to you, sure, but to anybody who knows a little bit about photography, it's like, okay, I can take a picture with this DSLR of a soda can that's exactly twelve inches away from or in front of this other thing in the background, and I know that from looking at that picture, that's about twelve inches mm-hmm. distance between the soda can and the wall. And your cell phone flattens the image completely. And since it's basically got all the saturation, the colors and everything all brightly, you know, oversaturated and stuff, and it looks like clown, it's clown photography, it's bright color, and it's completely flat. The fact that you don't recognize that that image needs the depth in it to give it that depth of field, to give it that sort of emotional heart string, the, the tug, like, oh, wow, it's a great picture. That's why you don't get it. My cell phone takes way better pictures than this camera. It's like you can't operate the camera to gather like the heartstring pull of like that amazing image, the one that talks to you, right? Speaks to your soul. Yeah. Because you don't have the skills. Because you can't identify what's a good picture to begin with. 
And that's why you're like, yeah, this, this trail camera is great. If completely oversaturated, <laughs> really contrasty images, no real depth of field. Looks like it was taken with a webcam that was stuffed inside a box, which they are. And that box was dropped. <laughs> yeah. You're blind, blinded by the garbage video quality because of the full feature set. It has every feature you'd ever want. It must be great. At the end of the day. Don't we watch car shows about horrible cars that had every feature people wanted? Well, and here's how I look at it. At the end of the day, when you're presented with the video, right? Mm -hmm. And the video looks like trash. It doesn't matter what features it had because they're not in the video. But see, that's all. But that in itself could be a whole episode about. You know, as photographers and, and image technicians, you're trained trash in, trash out. We, um, could, we could do a garbage whole... Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, garbage in, garbage out. We could do a whole podcast episode about paranormal evidence in the same rule. I mean... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just kind of one of those things. It's like our trail cams are garbage because they're just made that way. And I, and I sadly think... That you can keep spending money and getting, you know, deeper into that rabbit hole with trail cameras, right? Mm-hmm. It's been three, four, five hundred dollars on a trail camera, and it's still going to be garbage. Yeah, you know, evidence that you have that's not presented by somebody who you think is credible is going to be garbage to you, even if it's not. It just becomes one of those things. It's all related, and it's all the simulation. We're living in a simulation. Okay. All right. I'm done. But we're not living in a simulation. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, it's kind of a rambling start to the new year for us, and we decided we'd go ahead and put out this little video, or video, this little podcast. We do have some videos and stuff on our YouTube, and we're doing more shorts, YouTube shorts. Yes. And Instagram and TikTok and all that sort of thing. So I we're do trying to be to. a lot more active, even though it's uh, hard I, I do need to update our TikTok. We have a little bit out there. Um, but, yeah, we've been I've been pushing a lot of content towards Instagram and Instagram Reels, um, mostly because it's just been slightly easier to upload that way out here in the country. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. kind of is what it is. Yeah. But anyway, you can expect a lot, more for, a lot more from us this year. We have a lot of stuff that we're doing and trying to work out and get figured out for what we're going to do. And we do appreciate if you do listen to the podcast. It's very much appreciated. And hopefully – uh, this year we'll find something uh, that we put out that you'll be amazingly interested in. Speaking if you are, of, that's great. Speaking of being amazingly interested, we have four new stickers available for 2022. What? Yeah, those are going to be available in the Craft Intent Etsy shop, which there's a link in the show notes. I need to remember to say that at the beginning of the next episode so I can kind of push these out on you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the stickers. Yeah, so check those out. They're new. Really hoping you guys like those, and I think that's going to be something I'm going to do, too, is kind of put a little more effort on some of our swag this year. That's what it is. 2022 is a year of uh, effort. This ladybug will not leave me alone. Oh, she was on the back of your laptop. Well. Yeah. It's a dude ladybug. <laughs> so, haven't you ever watched that show? Is it Bugs or whatever that yeah. cartoon was called? Yeah. All right. So, anyway. I think we're going to take a second to wrap up the podcast. Yep. Thanks, so guys, for tuning in. Uh, like I said earlier, check us out on all our social media platforms. We are trying to make our Facebook group grow. We invite you guys to come in there, start some conversation, give us some show ideas. Links in the show notes. Thank you again, Patreon supporters. Um, if you'd like to support us on Patreon, I've put a link in the show notes as well. Very nice. Do you have anything else you'd like to add, or is that it? That's it. Okay, let's just be safe, everybody. Yeah. And remember to be politely skeptical. Yes. So, yeah. That's it. That's all I got. Bye. All right, anyway, see you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.